What's going on everybody? Welcome back. I'm going to try to race through this video today because it's supposed to get up to 110 degrees out here and this torso will absolutely melt in that kind of heat. So this was a viewer suggested video idea, which I love doing. Not sure if it's been done before. He said it hasn't, but I liked the idea. So today we're going to test how effective is a handgun at long range? Now, there's several reasons why handguns are inferior to rifles at long range. Number one, they're much harder to shoot. Most people just can't hit squat with a handgun at long range, myself probably included. And if we're talking self-defense, it's not likely that you would ever need to take a shot at 50 or 100 yards. Not impossible, but unlikely. The second reason is those handgun calibers just don't do well at long range. They're not designed for that. And even at close range, they are far less effective than a shotgun or a rifle. So today I wanna test it. If you had to make a handgun shot at 100 yards and you could actually hit the target, how effective would it be? It has been done, and there are situations you could find yourself in, active shooter, etc., where a long range pistol shot might be your only choice. And of course, for this one, we are gonna use a human torso from Ballistic Dummy Lab. Now, to do this test thoroughly, we would kind of need two torsos, one close range and one long range, so we could compare the results. Unfortunately, I don't have that. And a lot of YouTubers, myself included, have already shot these at close range. And we know for a fact, the nine millimeter will just blow the lung right out of the body. No, but in all seriousness, there are close range handgun videos if you wanna find them. I've done some, Garantham has a bunch of really good handgun videos. And if you look, you'll probably find them. But today we are sticking with long range. And you might've noticed that this one has some spots on his face and his belly pretty much all over. And that's because it got moldy while it was being shipped. It is so freaking hot out here, this thing didn't even last a week. But aside from that, it is in perfect condition. So we're not gonna let it go to waste. Now I've got a distance meter in the barn. I didn't bring it out here with me. I know roughly where 100 yards is at, but we're just gonna go ahead and walk it with big three foot steps and see where that puts us. One, two, three, 48, 49, 50, 98, 99, 100. <laughs> That is so far. That's a tough shot with a handgun. All right, well, you probably can't even see the torso. It's somewhere in this general area. Obviously, I have other cameras on it to capture the bullet impact, and we're just gonna rest these guns on this beanbag here, and hopefully we can hit the target. We're gonna start with the nine millimeter. This is a 124 grain gold dot, and we're shooting it out of the Glock 19. I wanna use common hollow points that people actually carry so the test is somewhat relevant. I'm gonna to try to put my sight right on the head and we'll see where it goes. All right, that one went through his right shoulder, so it went probably eight inches low and a few inches to the left. We'll try one more, then we'll go look at it. All right, I'm not sure where that one hit, but I saw it move, so I assume we did hit him. And probably the coolest thing about this is the delay from the gunshot to the bullet impact. You can actually hear the bullet hitting the torso. Let's go check it out. And the first one went in right here on the shoulder. You can probably see that entrance hole. Because it's so cloudy, it's kind of hard to see the wound cavity, but it's actually pretty impressive. Maybe from the back, you can see it a little bit better. And that bullet actually expanded and stayed in the torso. It did not pass all the way through, which is pretty cool. The second one that we shot miraculously went in right and his left eyeball. Hopefully you can see that entrance hole right there. A Little bit of bone fractures on the side of the skull and then on the back, you can see where it passed through. Now at close range, I feel like that one would have been a little more dramatic. We probably would have had some fluid fly out and stuff like that, but there's no doubt about it. Even at 100 yards, that is still very lethal. It just zipped right through. 
We might go back to the 9mm, but first I want to try the 40 Smith & Wesson. This is a 180 grain gold dot, and we're shooting it out of the Glock 23. I also put gloves on because my hands are sweaty as hell, and I don't want to lose the gun in the process. My front sight is covering the entire torso. <laughs> kind of hard to be precise, but we'll try it. And the 40 Smith & Wesson went in right there, barely nicked the right side of his stomach. Did not hit any vitals, but this one is cool because you can actually see the wound cavity pretty well. And that is impressive. That's about like what I would expect to see in a ballistic shell test from seven or 10 yards away. Very big wound cavity. And again, it did pass all the way through and out the other side. So probably nine inches of ballistic shell at least. I wanna hit vitals and see what it does. So let's try that one again. I think we hit it. Well, we got another headshot, and I thought headshots would be the hardest to do, but so far, that's really the majority of what we've been able to pull off. And the 40 looks like it did do quite a bit more damage. It went in right there, just below his right eye, and you can see the broken bones. We have a shattered cheekbone, split up the forehead, and also a big split in the side of the skull. And then the 40 looks like it came out right there. So the nine millimeter exited up here and the 40 exited down here. Again, very lethal and very effective, no doubt about it. Let's see if we can actually put one in the torso. All right, next up, I wanna try the Liberty Civil Defense. This is a 60 grain bullet going 2000 feet per second. Very fast and lightweight for a 40 Smith & Wesson. Maybe it will do better at long range. It would be really nice if we could actually hit the torso for once. Even when you're bench resting, because iron sights are so big, it's just hard to be precise with your shots. It basically covers the entire torso. That sounded like a rifle going off. Holy crap. You know, the entertaining part about this is as I'm walking up, I have no idea if they even hit the torso until I get there. It's kind of fun. Oh yeah, we finally hit the vitals. All right, the 40 Smith & Wesson Liberty Civil Defense went right there in the left lung, and that did some damage. Because this torso is kind of cloudy, it's hard to see, but right there, I can see quite a few of those bullet fragments in the torso. So it started expanding and breaking apart pretty quickly, which is the benefit of a high velocity pistol round. If we go around to the back, it did not go through, which is kind of what I expected. Again, that's a 60 grain bullet going 2000 feet per second. So you're typically not gonna get pass throughs because it's gonna expand and break apart pretty early on. And even at hundred yards, it still did its job. And clearly that would be fatal. Don't think I need to tell you guys that. And look at what I just found laying next to the torso. That is one of our gold dots. I can't tell if it's a nine millimeter or a 40 Smith & Wesson. It looks like, damn, they're too close to tell. It kind of looks like a nine millimeter to me. But either way, I assume that is one of our bullets that went through the head and then bounced off the railroad tie wall and landed on the ground just a few inches away. It expanded even at 100 yards, so that's pretty cool. It looks like the ballistics gel is kind of starting to split on the side of the head, so I went ahead and grabbed the 40 Smith & Wesson, same bullet that we shot through the head at 100 yards. I wanna try it at point blank range and see what the difference is. We know what it did at 100 yards. Let's see what it does up close. Big difference.
that is quite the difference in terminal ballistics from 100 yards to less than one foot. And you can see the damage that it did to that ballistic dummy head. Wow. I still don't think that one even came all the way through. It probably just stopped in the head. You can see there's no exit hole on the back. But man, did it do some damage on the front. We would have to chronograph these rounds to see how much velocity they're losing at 100 yards, but you can tell just by the result on the ballistic dummy head, it's significant, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, next up we have the 45 ACP 230 grain Black Hills hollow point. Unfortunately, the only 45 that I have right now is the Smith & Wesson MMP shield, but this is probably similar to what a lot of people would be carrying if they had to use a handgun at long range. So we'll see what it does. I assume the 45 is gonna drop quite a bit more than the others because it is going significantly slower. I would love to hit his right lung because that's the only part that's not covered in fluid, but it's a tough shot. Well, we definitely hit him because I saw the torso rock back and forth. Let's go check it out. All right, well, that one just barely grazed the bottom of his arm. If I had it six inches over this way, it would have been exactly where I wanted. That is a pretty good size wound cavity for a 100 yard 45, but not where I wanted it. Same exact bullet, we just gotta bring it over a few inches. No way. That went exactly where I wanted it, right in that lung. <laughs> that is awesome. Again, from 100 yards, the front sight basically just covers the entire torso. So I'm putting them kind of where I think they need to be and just hoping for the best. The fact that that actually went through the lung is incredible. Obviously, it's kind of hard to see in there because the rib cage and everything on the torso, but around the back, you can see that is the first one to actually pass all the way through the torso. I tried to brighten it up there so you guys can see the exit hole right there. Broke the rib, just completely removed that section of rib, it looks like, and that bullet did go all the way through. And depending on what you're looking for, that might not be a bad thing. It doesn't mean the bullet did not expand. It just means it didn't expand as quickly and slow down as much as the 40 Smith & Wesson did. It's also a heavier bullet, so it's harder to stop. And obviously, once again, that would be lethal. Even after going through all that ballistic shell, it still had enough on it to break through the ribs on the backside. So I think it would do the job. All right, guys, I think we've proven the point that all of these common handgun calibers would still be effective even at 100 yards. It wouldn't be my first choice as a long range weapon, but if you had to use one, it would get the job done. Let's go ahead and finish off this torso at close range with the 10 millimeter. This thing is a hand cannon. and the nine millimeter Norma monolithic hollow point. I wanna to try to put one of these right through his stomach. Well, we gave him a double tracheotomy with the 10 millimeter. Hopefully you can see those two bullet holes. And then I basically just mag dumped all over the entire torso. We've got some holes in the lungs, ribs, stomach, just lit them up like a Christmas tree basically. And then on the back, you can see that we do have some exit holes, but it looks like a lot of those did not go all the way through either. There's a fully expanded hollow point 
right there behind the rib cage. Hopefully y'all can see that. That looks pretty cool. We definitely had some pass through up here and another few down here. And then I double tapped them in the gut with the Norma monolithic hollow points from the nine millimeter. We've got two entrance holes right there and it looks like both of those did pass all the way through. They did quite a bit of damage on the inside though. Surely you can see that intestines or whatever that is. And then we have an exit hole right here and another exit hole right there. In my experience, usually if bullets don't hit bone, they will typically pass all the way through these torsos. And today we did kind of see that, but I gotta be honest, I was surprised at 100 yards that some of those did not pass all the way through. That was very impressive, um, exactly what you want with a self-defense round. And from that far away to still get expansion out of the bullet is cool. So. I'm impressed. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me today. The heat is setting in and I need to get the heck out of here. I hope y'all enjoyed this experiment. Um, as we saw, even at 100 yards, most common handgun calibers will still be effective if you can do your part and actually hit the dang target. It is not easy from that far away, especially with iron sights. If you think you could pull off a 100 yard shot with a pistol, let me know down in the comments. I don't know if I could, to be honest, especially with iron sights, it is not easy because the front sight just covers the entire target. With a red dot, I think I could probably do it, but it wouldn't be, you know, my first choice if I had to defend myself at long range. So hope y'all enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. As always, hit the like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.